learning activity, we'll be briefly looking at different types of inhaled pharmaceutical aerosol systems, and we'll be highlighting their pros and cons. We'll be looking at small volume nebulizers, pressurized meter dose inhalers, and dry powders in powder inhalers. And be looking at some examples of each of these different types of systems. Let's delve into small volume nebulizers. Throughout the presentation, there will be notations appearing on the screen. Please pay keen attention to the information. Nebulizers, also referred to as small volume nebulizers, are instruments that produce a scattered mist of liquid droplets, typically containing medicinal solutions or suspensions within an airflow. They are usually operated by compressed air or oxygen, a compressor, an electrical powered mechanism is also um, involved in this sort of system. Equipped with a face mask or mouthpiece, nebulizers can be utilized for patients receiving ventilation through an inline connection. Medications like bronchodilators, such as salbutamol, antibiotics like tobramycin, and antiviral drugs, such as ribavirin, are commonly administered via nebulization. As a patient inhales the aerosolized mist, it is, no, it is normally inhaled during normal breathing cycles, and it is exhaled accordingly. Now, these devices do not necessitate exceptional breathing abilities or manual dexterity from patients for operation. They find extensive use in pediatric care and among patients who are intubated or mechanically ventilated. Now, as with anything in life, there are benefits and there are drawbacks. So let's look at some benefits of using nebulizers. They're all listed here, and I'd just like to highlight a few. They're able to aerosolize many drug solutions as well as drug mixtures, provided they are compatible. It requires little cooperation or coordination, and therefore it is quite suitable for persons who are very young, the very old, debilitated, or distressed patients. And you are able to modify the concentration and the dose of the drug for the most part. And normal breathing pattern can be used, and an inspiratory pause or a breath hold is not required for efficacy, which we will see is quite critical for other types of aerosol delivery devices as we continue with this presentation. So what are the downsides of using or the drawbacks for using um, nebulizers? They are listed here. I'd just like to highlight one. You're going to have to have a power source for the machine to work. There is a problem with the fact that it is kind of bulky and cumbersome, difficult to transport around, so patient might not, patients might not want to use it. The treatment times may vary. It may last from 5 to 25 minutes, which is longer than, say, using a meter dose inhaler for treatment. And these are some of the, you could see the other drawbacks as listed here. Well, it is important to note that only medications approved by the FDA Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, CDER, are to be used with nebulizers, as drug delivery efficiency can differ among various nebulizer types. Using an inappropriate nebulizer may lead to administering an inhaled dose that may exceed the therapeutic range, potentially increasing the risk of side effects and toxicity. Therefore, it is crucial to utilize a nebulizer specified on the drug label whenever feasible. Now, there are three types of nebulizers that exist, and we're going to look at them now. Here we have a schematic representation of all three of the nebulizers, jet nebulizer, ultrasonic nebulizer, and the mesh nebulizer. Let's look at jet nebulizers. This type of nebulizer has been in use since the 1850s, and it remains the most commonly utilized and cost-effective option. It operates by the involvement of directing high-pressure air or compressed gas through a nozzle or a jet to aerosolize liquids. 
As the compressed gas passes through the jet, it creates a zone of reduced pressure that draws a liquid from a reservoir and causing it to fragment into droplets, thus generating an aerosol consisting of both large and small droplets. Of course, the small droplets is what the patient inhales, while the larger droplets are intercepted by a baffle that's positioned in the aerosol stream that redirects these large droplets back into the reservoir for recirculation, while the smaller droplets, as I said before, are inhaled by the patient. The size of aerosolized droplets can differ depending on the design of the system, leading to notable variability among jet nebulizers manufactured by different companies. Now, various models of jet nebulizers are optimized to perform efficiently within specific flow rates, typically ranging 2 to 8 liters per minute. Now, it's important to note that jet nebulizers may be unsuitable for use for a range of formulations, and this is because of the mode of operation. Can you think of a possible drawback to using this system for certain formulations? There are some drawbacks to using net nebulizers. One, usually inefficient. It's usually an inefficient type of nebulizer. Two, it has high residual drug volume. Now, what does this mean? Let's define some terms. The residual or dead volume refers to the volume left in the nebulizer after the completion of treatment, typically ranging from 0.5 to 2 mils. Fill volume represents the volume that's recommended for nebulization. And the manufacturer will tell you what that volume is. Now, a higher dead volume usually correlates with a lower amount of drug being nebulized as the dead volume does not undergo aerosolization. Therefore, it is advised to utilize a fill volume of four to five mils, unless otherwise specified by the manufacturer, of course. While this may dilute the medication, it ensures a larger portion of the drug is nebulized, right? However, this approach may prolong the treatment, right? It may prolong the treatment duration because it's going to take a little longer time for all of that drug now to be become nebulized. Another drawback is the entire process can be quite noisy, which may not be tolerable for all patients, particular, particularly the pa pediatric patients. And of course, you're going to have to have thorough cleaning procedures after um, use. Ultrasonic nebulizers were first introduced to the market as far back as the 1950s. Initially, this type of system was introduced for large volume nebulizers commonly used to deliver hypertonic solution for sputum induction. But the small volume ultrasonic nebulizers are now being used to deliver inhaled bronchodilators. It should be noted um, that these nebulizers should not be used for suspensions such as corticosteroid suspensions as the particles will settle to the bottom of the reservoir and not become aerosolized. The ultrasonic nebulization system, it operates by utilizing energy from an ultrasonic beam which then transfers this energy to the liquid within a reservoir to disperse it into droplets that's carried within an aerosol stream. The small droplets are the droplets that are inhaled by the patients. Large droplets that are formed are captured by a baffle and redirected back into the liquid reservoir. One drawback of this system is its tendency to generate a significant amount of heat in the liquid, which is attributed to the high frequencies reaching up to a few megahertz that is utilized to produce the ultrasonic waves. This heat can potentially denature certain active pharmaceutical ingredients, particularly macromolecules like proteins. Therefore, caution must be exercised when employing this machine with various formulations. And adhering to the manufacturer's recommendation is very crucial to mitigate potential risks. 
Now let's look at the mesh nebulizers. This type of nebulizer is relatively new and stands apart from others mentioned before due to its high efficiency and minimal residual volume, typically ranging from 0.1 to 0.5 mils. Mesh nebulizers can operate via two mechanisms, active vibrating mesh and passive mesh. In the active vibrating mesh mechanism, an aperture plate with about 1,000 to about 4,000 funnel-shaped holes vibrates, causing the liquid to pass through the mesh and become aerosolized. The passive mesh mechanism um, uses an ultrasonic horn to propel fluid through a mesh, as explained by Gardiner et al. 2017. Mesh nebulizers utilizes electricity, typically around 120 kilohertz, to vibrate a piezoelectric crystal that is connected to a laser-drilled metal mesh located at the bottom of a reservoir or cup that contains liquid medication. When this vibrates, it causes the metal mesh to oscillate, thereby pushing the liquid through the uniformly sized holes in the mesh. As a result, a gentle aerosol with a consistent aerodynamic particle size distribution is produced owing to the uniform holes laser drilled in the mesh. The aerosol is generated either below or to the side of the device and can be delivered to the patient through a mouthpiece, a face mask, or inline junction for mechanically ventilated patients. The merits of using this type of nebulizer is that they are relatively compact and portable, silent during operation, and they do not produce heat as would have been produced by the ultrasonic nebulizers. As such, they are capable to be used with a range of formulations or they are compatible with a large range of formulations such as low stability formulations and sensitive drug products. It is also able to aerosolize formulations with high viscosities and surface tensions, which is not possible with the previously mentioned nebulizers. Of course, the drawback to using this system is the cost, which is typically high in comparison to the other mentioned systems. Here are some examples of the nebulizers just discussed.